एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू न्यू पोस्ट टुडे एंड लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद द अक्टूबर करंट अफेयर्स फॉर द यू पी एस सी प्रिलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर एंड बिफोर दैट हैप्पी रिपब्लिक डे टू एवरी वन सो लेट द लाइट एंड द स्पिरिट ऑफ पेट्रियाटिज्म बी अ लाइव विद इन अस टिल आर लास्ट ब्रेथ्स एंड लेट एस डू एज मच एज वी कैन टू दिस मदर लैंड ऑफ आस सो येस बिगिनिंग विद द टू थाउजेंड एंड थ्री फिजिक्स नोबल प्राइज सो द थ्री नोबल लॉरेट्स इन फॉर फिजिक्स इन are being recognized for the experiments which have given humanity new tools for exploring the world of electrons now inside atoms and molecules so pierre agostini ferenc cross and annie huller have demonstrated a way to create extremely short pulses of light that can use be used to uh, measure and capture these rapid processes that happen within the atoms and the molecules that is especially in which the electrons move and change the energy now the lorentz experiment have produced this pulses of light so short that they are measured in auto second and thus demonstrating that these pulses can be used to provide images of processes inside the atoms and the molecules so this is for 2003 nobel Pre, uh, prize for the physics and we have armenia so we just yesterday we spoke about nagorno and karabakh region which is a disputed region between azerbaijan and armenia true breakaway countries of the soviet union and we have armenia now uh, parliament of armenia voting to join the icc that is the international criminal court and we know that the icc is used to try individuals while the international criminal while the international court of justice is a specialized agency of the united nations and it is used to de, to uh, solve disputes between the nations and uh, so armenia voted in its parliament to be a member of the international criminal court which earlier this year indicted a russian president vladimir putin and therefore what crimes are connected with regard to deep rotation of children to uh, from ukraine to the other countries in the aftermath of the war and for this reason uh, there was an arrest warrant issued by icc to vladimir putin and for this reason he did not attend the brussels uh, brics summit i'm sorry not brussels but brics summit in south africa as well and the move is said to be likely to straining the ties of armenia with the, uh, russia which last uh, which last which recently called upon yerevan that is the capital of armenia not to join icc and which is also an unfriendly step and the countries have been uh, signed and ratifying uh, the countries who have signed and ratified the rome statute that uh, created the icc are bound to arrest putin if he sets his foot on the soil so this is about um, Uh, the armenia voting to join uh, icc and south lonak lake was a news now this lake is located in sikkim and it was a news because of the glacial outburst flood that occurred because of heavy rainfalls in the upper region and therefore even a dam was ja- damaged in the sikkim region so find out which is the dam which was damaged and south lonak lake is located in sikkim it was a news because of this so there is the next news uh, the next important issue coming up is for nobel laureate for literature and this was given to Nor- Norway's John Foss now the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2023 has been awarded to the Norwegian author named as John Olav Foss for his innovative plays and prose which he gave voice to the unsayable Foss has written almost 40 plays apart from novels short stories children's books poetry and essays as well and his new name Septology 6th and 7th about two uh, uh, I'm sorry his new work Septology Uh, I'm sorry. His new his work, a new name, Septology is f- uh, six and seven are about two painters named as Astley, but with different lives and demons and preoccupations. This was the finalist in the International Booker Prize for last year. And other notable works for Fosse include I Am the Wind, Melancholy, and uh, Boat House, and also the Dead Dogs as well. Moving on to the next important issue is about the Nobel Peace Prize to Iranian activist Nargis. Now she is named as a champion for equality and women's rights rights and she belongs to Iran. The Nobel Peace Prize for 2023 was re- awarded to uh, the imprisoned Iranian human rights advocate Nargis Mohammadi. Uh, more than 20 years of fighting for women rights made her uh, made her a symbol of freedom and standard bearer in the struggle against Iranian theocracy. In 2003 she d- uh, joined the defenders of human rights center founded by that year's nobel peace prize laureate shireen ibadi and she prote- she also uh, uh, protested against the issue in manipur at the united nations human rights commission as well 
The next most important issue is with the Rajasthan CM announcing three new districts. I have already spoken about this, but once again, it is a state prerogative and a power to form new districts. There is no role of the center in this. And this was the news about. Uh, there have been other states who have formed uh, districts also. Uh, the uh, uh, Telangana uh, state uh, also formed new districts along with Andhra Pradesh as well. And Russia now pulled back is, or suspended its membership to the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which is a successor to the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Find out what are these two treaties about and the years that were signed. This is a multilateral treaty to ban nuclear weapon test explosion or any other nuclear explosion, both for civilian and military purposes and in all environments as well. So it was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1996, but did not come into force because eight countries did not ratify it and the eight countries which did not ratify it are china democratic republic of korea egypt india iran israel pakistan and usa as well and the next most important issue is with regard to GST Council now affirming 28% tax on online betting. Now, the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs has notified an effective date for implementation of 28% of central and integrated GST on online money laundering and gaming and casinos as well. This was coming into force on October 1st. Let me tell you that gaming is a state list and every state has its individual laws on gambling. There is one central law for gambling, that is the Public Gambling Act of 1857, I'm sorry. And we have Goa and Sikkim are the only states in the country that have casinos. Uh, also, the uh, information technology rules were recently released to bar the advertisements of online gaming and also tries to regulate online gaming uh, apps as well. There is a discussion and also a debate on games of skill and games of chance. The Supreme Court in its verdict, uh, uh, one of the verdicts said that games of skill should be promoted and not games of chance. So this is a debate that was going on. There is no particular definition still yet on the government laws which constitutes game of skill and game of chance as well. So Operation Koleru 2.0 is the news now. It is one of the operation to save India's largest freshwater lake from degradation. Now it is located in Andhra Pradesh and the survival of India's largest freshwater ecosystem Koleru Lake in Andhra Pradesh is under severe threat upon aquaponds being continuously encroached and thriving of this wetland now is threatened. Koleru Lake is one of the largest freshwater lakes in India located in the state of Andhra Pradesh and forms the largest shallow water uh, freshwater lake in Asia as well. It is also a Ramsan, a Ramsan designated wetland and it is just 15 kilometers away from Eluru and 65 kilometers away from Raja Mahindravaram. The lake is located between Godavari and Krishna deltas. Koleru is located in Eluru district and the, let, uh, and the lake is fed by water from seasonal Budag uh, uh, Budameru rivers and also Tamileru rivers as well. It is connected to Godavari and Krishna irrigation systems by over 67 minor and major irrigation canals and this lake is also a major tourist attraction which as many visitors, especially the migratory birds from the Central Asian track of the migratory birds, many birds might come here in winter, like the Siberian crane, the ibis, the painted stalks. The lake is also an important habitat for resident and migratory birds like the grey and the spot-billed pelican. The lake was declared as a wildlife sanctuary in 1999 under India's Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and designated as a wetland of international importance in 2002 under the International Ramsar Convention. So this is about uh, uh, this is about Operation Koleru 2.0. And the next one is about Territorial Army. I'm sure you must have heard must not have heard of this body. So this territorial this army this uh, this uh, this institution called as Territorial Army. Army. It was a news recently because it is now employing five Chinese language interpreters and this is a citizen's force raised under the Act of the Parliament in 1948. It currently has 60 units of which 14 are deployed in counter-insurgency duties in support of the army and two are deployed in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It has departmental territorial army battalions funded by the Ministry of Environment, Forest, Jal Shakti, Railways and also Petroleum. Now, 
territorial army units were deployed to support the army in the eastern Ladakh as a part of Operation Snow Leopard at the peak of standoff between India and China in 2020. Similarly, as the crisis unfolded in Manipur, the territorial army oil units were stepped up and took control of the oil installations that were not operational and augmented manpower in order to ensure supplies to the petroleum and oil products and also refueling of aircrafts as well. Centers also deployed them in conjunction with the Border Roads Organization and the Ministry of Railways to protect the under construction rail and road alignments in very sensitive areas like the Red Corridor of the left wing extremism areas as well. Two new ecological battalions are raised in Maharashtra later this month on the request of the state government and the first ecological task force was raised in 1982 to protect the severely degraded, uh, degraded hills of Masuri, Uttarakhand due to in, intensive and incessant quarrying of lime and deforestation as well. A specialized, a specialized territorial army of ecological battalion called as the Ganga Task Force is now working for conservation and rejuvenation of Ganga under the Ministry of Jal Shakti and uh, also as a part of the national mission for clean Ganga. So this is about the territorial army raised under the Act of the Parliament in 1948. And we have China and Bhutan having discussions about the border uh, uh, issues between them and they are nearing uh, they are nearing completion so there is a three step formula that is being uh, adopted by China and Bhutan India has shown sensitiveness because of the doklam which is one of the uh, issues that are of uh, of issue of conflict between Bhutan and uh, China which is very close to the India's chicken neck and the sino uh, and let me tell you that this uh, sino Bhutan uh, border dispute goes back to several decades. Let me tell you that China also lays claim to 495 square kilometers of northern central Bhutan and also 269 western Bhutan which comes very close to the Dopalam and also very close to the Siriguri corridor or the chicken's neck. Now since 2020 it has claimed another 740 square kilometer of territory in the, Sak uh, in the Sakting wildlife sanctuary in eastern Bhutan which also has parts of the Arunachal Pradesh. The territorial claim in western Bhutan uh, also includes Doklam Plateau. So India is concerned about the west and the east that is towards Doklam and also the Sakting that is very near to Arunachal Pradesh and if these areas are given up by Bhutan then we will have our neighbour China very close to our border. So India considers Doklam Plateau to be a undisputed territory of Bhutan and also helped it in 2017 when the Doklam issue was high between Bhutan and China. China considers it as an extension of the Chumbi Valley, the wedge of land that lies between Sikkim and Bhutan. And let me tell you that there are three uh, regions of dispute between China and Bhutan. In the north, you have the Pasam Lung and the Jakar Lung regions and in the west, you have the Doklam Plateau and in the east, you have the uh, the Sakking uh, sanctuary which is claimed a part of it which is claimed by China in Bhutan which comes very very close to uh, the Tawang area of Arunachal Pradesh. So the next one is about gig workers bill and the first bill uh, and the first uh, bill for the protection of gig workers was brought by the state of Rajasthan. The next one is Gaganyaan mission which emphasizes demonstration of human space flight capability for launching of a crew of three members into an orbit and not on the lunar service but onto an orbit of 400 km for a three day mission and then bringing them back safely to the earth by landing in the Indian sea waters. Now various precursor missions are being planned and demonstrated and also tested for the preparedness of the Ganganyan or the human space flight mission. The demonstrator missions include the integrator airdrop test IADT, the pad abort test PAT and the test vehicle flights. Safety and reliability of all the systems will be proven in the unmanned missions preceding the manned mission. And the LBM3 rocket is going to be used to lift the human space flight mission of ISRO in the Ganganyan mission. It consists of a solid stage, liquid stage and also a cryogenic stage totally indigenously developed. All the systems in the LVM3 launch vehicle are reconfigured to meet the human rating requirement and christened as human related LVM3 and LVM3 is the rename of GSLV Mark III launch vehicle. So the H 
uh, LVM3 is nothing but the human rated uh, LVM3 vehicle is capable of launching the orbital module into the intended low earth module or orbit of 400 km. The orbital module will be the orbiting earth comprising the crew module and also a service module. Now the OM or the orbital module is equipped with state of the art avionic systems with adequate redundancy considering of the human safety. And the next most important is about the flight test vehicle abort mission that was tested with regard to Gaganyaan. The ISRO launched Gaganyaan's flight test uh, vehicle abort mission TVD-1 from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. ISRO's successful test of this test vehicle is a part of the Gaganyaan mission to take India one step closer towards realizing the first human space flight program. And the Gaganyaan program, I told you, aims to put um, three people into the orbit of 400 and then getting them back from there. So this will be, the mission will establish India as a fourth nation in the world after United States, Russia and China to conduct manned space flight. And the flight test of abort mission, the objective is to launch a rocket uh, to an altitude of approximately 17 kilometers followed by a simulated abort signal resulting in the separation of the crew module. Safety test, the crew module will then descend safely using a parachute, ultimately splashing down into the Bay of Bengal. And the duration of this is scheduled to be 532 seconds from a liftoff of 8 p.m. to a crew module splashdown situated 10, 10 kilometers away from Sri Hariko coast an empty module will be also be located it is note that the crew module will remain unscrewed during this test and this new test vehicle this mission introduces a new test vehicle aptly named as test vehicle demonstration one or tvd1 designed specifically for testing systems and procedures so this is about the Gaganyaan mission and the test vehicle demonstration about mission. So the next one is about a new ensign now for the Indian uh, uh, Air Force, for the Air Force. So Indian Navy, I'm sorry, Indian Navy. Indian Navy adopted a new ensign mark as a mark uh, on its first, on its 91st anniversary. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, Air Force, see, just find out about what is the ensign. I think I've written the wrong notes over here. It's about Indian Air Force having a new ensign. So anyway, let me read the Indian Air Force. So this was adopted uh, during the Air Force Day Parade. And also the Indian Air Force, which is an, uh, the crest, uh, the Indian Air Force crest symbol, which is now being used as a new ensign, is a national symbol. It contains the Ashoka lion on top of the words Satyameva Jayate in Devanagari below it. Below the Ashoka line is the Himalayan Eagle with wings spread out, meaning that flying capabilities of the Indian Air, Air Force, stating um, it, it stay, this is what was given by the Indian Air Force detail. And also a ring in light blue color encircles the Himalayan Eagle with the words Bharatiya Vayu Sena. And also the motto of the IAF is inscribed into the new ensign, uh, ensign which is uh, below the Himalayan Eagle in golden Devanagari. So we have a new ensign altogether, not only for the Indian Air Navy but also for the Indian Air Force as well. And now GST Council has taken a few measures to boost trade. What are they? Let's look into them. So GST Council is a constitutional body constituted under Article 271A of the Constitution and it is headed by the Finance Minister, Union Finance Minister. Now to boost trade with foreign, uh, boost um, Foreign trade, the GST Council has taken a few measures including enabling tax credits for service exporters receiving payments in rupees, critical, which, has, uh, which is very critical for the trade with countries like Iran and Russia, which are now facing global uh, sanctions. Now, the government has been pushing for rupee-based trading arrangements with several countries to reduce the dependency of the US dollar. And banks from over 20 nations have opened what is called as the special rupee Vostro accounts in the RBI, where Indian banks banks can permit remitting of payments for their imports from India. Now separately the council has also decided to undo certain notifications which have made it very dif uh, difficult for the firms to supply goods and services to the special economic zones to claim tax refunds. And the GST council is a governing body consisting of 33 members headed by the Union Finance Minister. The ministers of state in charge of the revenue or finance of the states are its members and the ministers of state uh, in charge of finance, taxation and other ministers as nominated by each state's uh, government are also its members.
so this is about uh, the gst council taking some steps with regard to this uh, to uh, increase in exports and uh, five states we went to elections uh, recently they are chatisgarh mizoram rajasthan telangana and madhya pradesh and articles 168 deal with constitution of legislatures in the state 169 deals with abolition of the legislative councils in the state and 170 deals with composition of the legislative assemblies and with regard to economic nobel prize so we have the nobel prize in economics 2023 being awarded to the American economic historian and professor Claudia Golden for her work in examining the wage inequality between men and women through centuries now the prestigious award called as the Swerigs uh, Swerigs uh, Ricks Bank Prize for Economic Sciences is in memory of Alfred Nobel is awarded to the Harvard professor so uh, the jury stated that around the globe 50% of the women take part in the labor market as compared to 80% of the men but however they earn very less in comparison to the men and when they want to reach the stage of the earnings of the men it takes a very long time in their career ladder as per the findings of golden female participation in the labor force show a u shaped curve which means participation of women decreased with the shift from agrarian to industrial society gradually the participation started to increase in the 20th century with expansion of service sector and our research trends were the result of both structural changes and also evolving social norms as well a study also showed that access to contraceptive pills played a very key role in stepping up growth in education levels during the 20th century by offering new opportunities of career planning for women so this is about the part 2 for october current affairs for the upsc upcoming uh, exam examination of 2024 and if you did please do like share subscribe and do not forget to comment and i shall see you tomorrow in my next part for october current affairs for the preliminary examination and until then it's very happy learning